Yeah, see people hitting the pans. People did this in Argentina in 2001, you know. This is when you want your government overthrown. Uh, and it says, uh, graves incidentes in distinos puntos in a, de la capital. So there's lots of, in, in central parts of the, or important points of the city are being basically held hostage. Right. And look at the people. They're not all like young, uh, angry people. They're bringing out uh, senior citizens. Everyone's angry because everyone's got a grievance in all of Latin America. Why are they and beating up the taxi guy there or the ambulance? That is, hitting him with sticks? That, that's Carabineros. That is a police vehicle. Is it? Yeah. Oh, God. So that they're going to like annihilate it. And then like, so this is, they're, they're really good at doing Destrozen. what they do. Destrozen. Rent and mobile. De, okay. Yeah. Carabineros. Oh, wow. Yeah, and this is um, next door to Argentina, and it's basically experiencing the same economic collapse as this, you know, autumn season. Their spring is is unfolding. Uh, where there's a complete run on Argentina right now, as far as uh, uh, capital flight, and Chile is kind of quickly entering the same process when no one was talking about this the whole year. No one could fathom that Chileans are also going to lose a lot of money in their pensions. Uh, and that's mainly what these protests are about. It's not just about well, transportation. Well, 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 let me interject there. It, it actually yeah. ties in with tonight's show. They're having a, a runoff on their food markets there and food stands and food distribution is on, on the verge of breaking down there. Now, which country is this? In Chile. Really? Okay. Yeah. They're having huge issues getting food into certain areas. And, and yeah, it's not looking good. And this is what we find ourselves kind of in this whole hemisphere is, is the bull market in stocks. Although in Chile, it's been rolled over and decreasing for a year, the, the value of stocks. We're going to celebrate bull markets until things collapse from the bottom up. Mm -hmm. Un yeah, civil unrest in Chile. Civil unrest has hit the streets of Chile. Civil unrest has hit the streets of Hong Kong. You just saw it with, live, with, uh, live with Evan. And then I know this is happening all over uh, parts of Argentina. I know yes. this is happening in small pockets of uh, Brazil. And uh, small pockets of Brazil, mainly uh, along the coast there. But I don't know. Like, this is, this is, I think this needs to happen. I think there needs to be some sort of correction. And, and people make the, people, wow, that guy just threw an office chair. Yeah, I mean, this is wild. I, I'm surprised about this. an office this. chair. I spent like two years living in Santiago, and they're unfolding in other parts of Chile too, other important cities, and some looting going on. You know, they empty out a whole Walmart. Wow. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna change the mic of the night topic here to not food prices skyrocketing, but world civil unrest. Yeah, Lebanon's another one. All right, I just saved it as world civil unrest because the world is entering a massive level of civil unrest. And I, yeah, I, I, I knew I knew Chile was okay on the books, but I knew that their pensions were being squabbled, and I knew that they had they had a one of their biggest unions there fell apart like four years ago. And then a lot of the newer workers that were pensioners weren't getting pensions anymore when they started, and they cut back on, uh, they've cut back on their production about forty percent in the last two and a half years. Yes, and the, uh, think, the mining. Go ahead. Do you think that is because they're trying to be more green? Because that's a bunch of garbage. Oh, who's trying to be green? Uh, Chile. Oh, let's become green all of a sudden. Even though uh, you know we bring down our production ten percent, we're screwed. Oh, Canada's no. doing it. Oh, let's be more green and ship out all our jobs and starve our own people. Like, I mean, I mean is Chile, Chile suffers from the commodities. Chile, Chile suffers from the commodities curse. I mean, they produce copper, a lot of mined goods, and then how to distribute the the tax revenue from that is a constant debate. Mm -hmm. And now, lo and behold, I mean, what's happening is the price of copper decreases to a level where the country's basically not making money getting it out so the mining has you know the layoffs they're not really operating at any capacity and then the people aren't getting those jobs as well as the state is not getting the revenue so there has to be some austerity type 
things. Wow, lots and of adults. I'm seeing like people like in their 30s and 40s, a lot of white hair here riding. Yes, exactly. Uh, it's the, see? Um, yeah, and then... The, so Holy Chile's got smokes, like a, the whole city's under turmoil. Oh yeah, my the, god! And the... Yeah, this looks like Argentina in 2001, and I'm telling you, in the past few weeks, no one was talking about a Chilean crisis. I mean, just me. Holy guys, we, we're seeing it here right now. This video is from today, and this is huge, huge. Directo, 24 horas, último minuto. I wonder if these guys are live right now. Maybe. Oh, uh, yes, they, they are live right now on the link. And then it, I think if you skip to the main... And you can see the president declaring a state of siege, the president uh, declaring a state of siege where he's, um, you know, the martial law type things and deploying the troops on the streets. Um, my connection to this is that, um, well, how do I say this? I met the president and also taught English to the troops that are on the streets. Okay, I get some, I get someone to uh, ask me to look up the Beirut protest. I'll look it up in a second here. Wow, this is in, in, intense. Now yeah, gonna, and, gonna, there's a guy in that fuck in that in that uh, vehicle there, and they're trying to roll it over. Yeah, we're gonna get to Beirut. Um, yeah, so all these countries have so much in common. They're all kind of a little bit more fragile of economies, but we're seeing the periphery of the world uh, come undone. Peripheral economies. That's what well, this is. The Chilean banks, I think, what they became deregulated. What in, in 2001, 2002, when they deregulated their banking system? Uh, I'm not sure what if they put a year on deregulation, but I mean they they had once some they deregulated, they start moving, they start removing a lot of laws that were put into place to protect the common citizen against the banks, right? And we saw it in the states when they removed the Glass Steagall Act and all the other different acts to basically run amok with people's finances and and basically bet on the stock markets with people's money. But now, and you're saying 2001, huh? yeah, you're saying in 2001 that was uh, taking place in Chile. Yeah, wasn't there a deregulation in their banking system, and that's what put them into this situation they're in today? Uh, as far as leading up to today, I mean, not necessarily, because some of it... Okay, okay. Um, no, because that could be 100% uh, would, wrong, right? So, but I'm just right, saying... I would, there, there's a lot of different factors to it, like uh, ooh, uh, the, the way the banks have, uh, since 2008, run away with debt in the country. I mean... This country uh, became very expensive because of the debt bubble. There's a there's a housing bubble in Santiago where the houses are way overpriced. Um, so I, I saw a country just uh, where people got by by using debt to pay for necessities. And it, it just kind of worked for a while. The the malls would be full of Argentines coming over to stock up on things and because they were having a prosperity that was all built on debt. And now it's just all coming down like a house of cards. And then China, back to Hong Kong, they, Hong Kong, I mean, is a separate entity and they, they like to be individual and, but they are responsible for like 75% of China's yuan transactions right. in the world. Right. So th this is crippling for the Chinese uh, yuan transactions too. So imagine, imagine a world over the next few months. Where these commodity producing countries that were uh, the the big beneficiaries of the China's boom are actually in total economic collapse, and where's so this is a global collapse that is just unfolding and it's unprecedented. It's hard to imagine or predict. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow! Look and at that they trashed, they completely trashed that subway station. Yeah, I mean, so this makes Hong Kong look like, like amateurs in some ways. Yeah, but Hong Kong, they're 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 pretty they're pretty. But Hong Kong, the 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 police and stuff, they're not risking it getting into those streets with those vehicles anyway. Like these guys oh, okay. are, they, they they're still they're still allowing traffic to to go through these streets, which is a big mistake. A lot of these points should be shut down, right? But you're still seeing vehicles. Look, this guy's still driving through here on the left. He's getting thrown rocks at. Yeah. And this is just, yeah, part of a contagion. Did you see Ecuador is going through the same thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, Ecuador and has been 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 unstable at least for the last two and a half years. But 
But uh, they had that mini riot two years ago uh, at the prison. I don't know if you remember that. And that sparked uh, more little unrest there. And then, uh, then there wasn't there the then the, the Ecuador government wasn't allowed to land his plane in Europe. Was it was it him? For what reason? Because they thought that uh, uh, Snowden was on his plane or something. Okay, yeah. Do you remember that? That was three years ago? Three four? That was a while ago, but right. still. And that, what do you think of Snowden? Uh, well, I mean, he's got no, really no... Ch uh, he's going to have to... I don't know. He could martyrize himself, or he could... Wow, look at the rocks inside the subway station. Holy shoot. Holy crap. So is Chile going to experience a runoff on the banks? Are these protesters going to organize to remove all their money from the bank accounts to create a runoff oh. on the banking system? Because there's obviously no confidence in the government in Chile right now as we speak. Well, the focus of my shorts have been on Chilean banks, and it's been a steady decrease. And it goes into Banco Santander, which I've watched these plenty of videos on Spanish mm, bad management of Banco Santander. And I have no reason to think Chile is any different. So uh, as far as runoffs, um, I would say the dollar would go up a lot in Chile. Their currency would go way down. Mm -hmm. And maybe some bank runs, sure. And as far as the people organizing to do it, no, I just think it's baked into the cake of their trash economy, um, the bank runs and things. And this could be something to blame it on. Like in the creation of the next new world or world order, they'll say, well, look what we did. We burnt our own country. We can't do that again. Let's be orderly next time. Yeah, and, and create the, not the law of the jungle, but the law of a new world order. Right. And did you see our, our lovely comedian S, uh, Ellen DeGeneres? Degenerate? Yes. Degenerata? I'm happy you got that right. Degenerate, yes. De degenerada? Um, in Spanish, it would be degenerada. Degenerada, sí. Por supuesto. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's uh she she appeared with Bush and and there was a beautiful encounter where they sat at some football game in wonderful overpriced seats because they're both millionaires. Well, and, hold on. Go ahead. Stop the press. I got a better one. Obama meddling with Canadian elections and telling everyone to vote for Justin Trudeau. Oh, Canada has a democracy that I think matters. I, I didn't know this. Yeah. So Obama stepped in and said, I like Justin Trudeau, and he cares about climate change. Of course he does! Right, and that's the other thing. We could talk about the cost of living, um, security, um, a future, and health care. These are complaints I know from Canadians, not how many trees these guys plant to make Canada, to, to end the horrible Canadian influence on the world with these massive carbons and and the, the suffering that Canadians suffer from climate change. Yeah, Canadians are suffering every day. Even though human beings um, produce or whatever they, 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 they add to climate change, like what is 0.0001%? Right, and I'm just thinking about me and Tilbury, Chatham, Leamington, mm -hmm. up to Stratford. Are we all concerned here? about climate change ruining our Ontario? No, I, I don't I don't see climate affecting Ontario, do you? Me, of course not. Climate is it's going to going to have probably a colder winter just for for jinxing yourself. It was global warming. Right. And then it's That's, climate change, right? And on to, on to Edmonton where it starts snowing in October. Yeah, and then after you get these Chinooks, and then you got that 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 what's that idiot's name again? Leonardo DiCaprio filming a movie in 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 Alberta in the winter, and it, he he experiences a Chinook where it's minus, uh, it, it starts it starts at like minus twenty degrees, and then by the evening it's like plus thirty degrees outside, and he's like, right. oh. Uh, the, uh, the climate change is destroying. Look, uh, you should see what happened to me when I was in Alberta and this and that. And he was talking about this and everything. And, buddy, it's a Chinook. It's been happening since the time of Moses. Get over it. Yeah, and maybe politicians that want to run on climate change should do it in a place where it's uh, like 50 degrees Celsius in the desert in Australia. Maybe in the local election there they can get some fame and, and gain favor, but... It's just got to be getting old for a Quebecois 
to hear about the ravages of global warming when it's not any warmer now mm -hmm. than it was 50 and 100 years ago on the day-to-day. -day. 